Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. And the last time I did my movie review was Mission Impossible Fallout, which is the best of the Mission Impossible franchise. You know, Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt. Um, but last week, I went to Dollar Tree. I also went to Goodwill and Walmart to go with it. But anyway, I actually went there just to find out if they have tons of Blu-rays available. Because a few weeks ago they actually had a sale where they were selling tons of of Blu-ray titles that I never thought I would find, and it was mostly recent titles. And it would have been good to pick it up for a dollar, but unfortunately, uh, my Dollar Tree in my area, which is Glendale, they didn't have what I'm looking for, so they only had just a few titles that that are good enough for me. So I had to pick up some of them at other Dollar Trees available um, around my area. Like I had to go to one in Pasadena, I had to go to one in Tahunga, or any other location around here just to find what I'm looking for. Um, but I ended up picking up uh, several DVD titles that are so rare and I only picked up two Blu-rays sadly I wish I could find some more. I, I mean, it did kind of made it up for the fact that I went to Walmart and I picked up other two Blu-rays, but it was only for five bucks. And then I put four titles, all DVD, at um, Goodwill. It was a Goodwill next door to Honga, because I figure, what the hell? <laughs> uh, they had like a a green tax sale. Half of it wasn't uh, green tag, though. But whatever. Well, anyway, uh, one of the DVDs I picked up at Dollar Tree was the movie that came out, you're going to believe this, on my birthday, May 2nd, 1997, which I turned 12 years old at the time. And two films came out at the same time. Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery with Mike Myers, which eventually became a franchise later. And Breakdown... A suspense thriller with Kurt Russell and Kathleen Quinlan. Very good film. Very underrated too. Um, but there's also this movie called Commandments. With Aidan Quinn, Courtney Cox from the TV show Friends yeah, as Monica. She's been in other stuff like Ace Ventura, Peck Detective, Masters of the Universe and even the screen films. Also, uh, Anthony LaPaglia, who's been in several films, including uh, Betsy's Wedding, uh, with Alan Alda, who wrote and directed the film. He was also in the movie Innocent Blood. Yes, Innocent Blood, uh, the horror comedy that was directed by John Landis. Uh, even the movie Saw Mary an Axe Murderer, the, the comedy <laughs> with Mike Myers. Um, this is also a comedy too, but it's a dark comedy and drama about what was it like if a good person suddenly uh, gets all the bad luck in the world and the only way to stop it was to break all the rules so he can get an answer. Well. This is the movie where apparently God is doing evil things to one person and he just gets his revenge by breaking all the Ten Commandments. Now, this would have been a good concept, a very intriguing one, if it wasn't so adequate and shallow. And that was the problem. So, at times... I wanted to like the movie, I wanted this movie to be good, but it just turns out to be quite of a disappointment. But on the other hand, it did actually have some good moments here and there, and we're going to get to it so, as it follows. Um, and I love the cast, so hey, it was worth it. 
Um, I've seen this one before, and the fact that I found this for a dollar at Dollar Tree, I figured, what the hell. I mean, I regret myself for picking up something like this that I'm not a big fan of, but you know what? For a dollar, <laughs> why not? You won't be able to find something like this nowadays, unless you have to get it on Amazon, so, where goodness knows how much it costs. Like you can go for cheaper prices, or maybe you can go for higher prices. So. And it's not even on Blu-ray either, so keep that in mind. So this is part of the uh, Universal Studios selection. Uh, the film was actually released by Gramercy Pictures, which I know the company actually had a revival, but unfortunately it just ended. Sadly, um, yeah, as you can see, and the DVD. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get this out exactly what it looks like, <laughs> and it's bare bones, doesn't even feature a menu, not even a trailer. So, what can you do? <laughs> I mean, that's why this movie is so obscure. Plus, it's produced by Ivor Reitman. Yeah. Who gave us Ghostbusters. <laughs> it stars Aidan Quinn, Courtney Cox, Anthony LaPaglia, Kevin Dunn, Joanna DeGoing, who's been in films such as uh, Wild Earp, Phantoms, even that terrible film, Home Alone 4. Yeah. At least this movie's better than that. Peter Jacobson. Uh, Pamela Gray. Pat McNamara. Alice Drubman. And Tom Otteridge. And it's written and directed by Daniel Tablitz. The yeah, same writer who gave us The Squeeze. A very underrated comedy with Michael Keaton, along with Wade Don Sean, Joe Pantiano, and Meatloaf. <laughs> he also went on to write some other films, even direct some too, such as uh, Breaking All the Rules with Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Even the movie Chaos Fury with uh, Ryan Reynolds. There you go. The movie begins when we meet a man named Seth Warner, who's played by Aidan Quinn, who's a good religious man, he's Jewish, he has a beautiful wife named Karen, who's played by Joanna Going, who's ready to be pregnant, he actually works as a doctor to treat patients, a great dog, and a wonderful home. But all of a sudden, Bad luck's starting to happen to him when um, he was actually with Karen at the beach. Yeah, in fact, he even had a magnifying glass that uh, Karen gave him to him, you know, where he was just looking at the, the eyes to see if he isn't lying or anything. That was sweet. Suddenly, um, she went swimming and all of a sudden she banished in the thin air that somehow she drowned then his home was destroyed by a hurricane and it was only one big hurricane he was with his dog it only destroyed his own home it didn't destroy every home so that's really clever <laughs> and worse yet he lost his job as a doctor. So his boss, uh, played by Kevin Dunn, fired him. So now he lives in an average rooftop apartment in New York City, feeling very angry and depressed that God really betrayed him and wants up on top of the roof uh, getting struck by lightning. But unfortunately, he survived. He was taken to the hospital, and his dog suddenly had an injured leg. So Seth just couldn't take it anymore. So his plan was to seek revenge by violating all of the Ten Commandments. 
that he had to put on his list just to succeed and get his answer. He was invited to stay with his sister-in-law and bank manager named Rachel, who's played by Courtney Cox, who lives with a sleazy but a complete jerk journalist who's also the narrator of the film and husband named Harry, who's played by Anthony LaPaglia. Rachel helps an elderly couple both played by Alice Drummond and Tom Alderidge, you know, trying to re recuperate their money loss from a charity fund and to save their home. While Harry is reporting a scoop on the police chief named Warren, who's played by Pat McNamara. Yeah, in fact, there was a scene where <laughs> he just grabs a uh, tape recorder and he just says no comment and then suddenly he takes his tape recorder and dumped it into his coffee <laughs> Yeah. anyway but not only that but he had a report um, on his wife uh, Marissa Murphy who's played by Pamela Gray who somehow Harry eventually has an affair with you know, she started, yeah, he started to have sex with her but basically Marissa is just using him He also collects a lot of rare and hard to find guitars in his basement. So, of course, um, Seth wants up uh, sleeping inside because you know, there is a bed inside the, the basement. So, but he figures that's the place where he has to store it. <laughs> yeah. The only problem is Rachel and Harry's uh, marriage is falling apart. So Seth's mission continues to go on, completing one by one of all the Ten Commandments, such as carving artifacts on a naked woman with severe heads uh, in place. And that's not the worst part. He wants up shouting and ranting at a library, even wants up ranting at... Uh, his father's uh, church, and since he is Jewish, he had to say everything about God. And even worse, he wants up stealing um, all of Harry's uh, precious guitars and wants up placing it inside Melissa Murphy's basement at her house. So then. Harry wants up in jail, getting beat up by a bunch of criminals that's sent there. Yeah, just when he was about to use the phone. Because we also begin to find out that Seth actually had sex, you know, trying to create uh, adultery on Rachel. So now, Rachel suddenly becomes pregnant. There we go. All leads to a dual fight between Seth and Harry and an alleyway, you know, in the bar. Because this is where they find out. But his final commandment, which Seth suddenly confronts with God at the brink of a raging hurricane in Montal. So he was decided to go all the way on top of the lighthouse. So he can jump off like commit suicide at this point yeah I'm gonna leave it there um, you know what I know I've done this a few times and sometimes I don't want to spoil too much but you know what if you haven't seen the movie then maybe it's best not to watch the review until later or maybe just try to see if you can find a copy somewhere. I mean, it should be available in other places, but I don't know. But this is going to be hard, uh, but I'll, I'll take my chances. So I'll just break my own commandment by thou shalt not spoil. <laughs> you know, There's no such thing, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Well, there was a miraculous ending in the movie where... 
apparently after there was a dual fight once again, only this time uh, Harry suddenly steals the gun from from Warren, who was about to have sex with his wife, Marissa, because he's also looked at his list that he found, and it says, Thou shalt not kill. So he tried to go all the way up to Montal, all the way to the lighthouse to see where he's at, and he wants to shoot. He was actually planning to shoot Seth. So it leads to a fight, and then suddenly the gun fell, and and then Seth suddenly picks up the gun and wants up um, shooting the Harry, but actually. Uh, it actually hits uh, parts of his ear, and then he was ready to jump off uh, of the lighthouse. So, yeah, he was already washed away, he disappeared. But then, <clears throat> just as uh, Harry came to uh, Rachel, just to apologize to her uh, after what he did, I mean, then, you know, two elderly couple came. And then he was telling the Rachel that Seth is dead, but then suddenly he was telling Rachel that he's a changed man and he wants to make it up for it, but unfortunately Rachel decided not to, to stay with Harry. I mean, he broke up with him, and then she wants up going all the way to Montal, where all of a sudden we see a marine biologist and several people coming by just, just found a dead whale. The ball just, just took a knife and just uh, slashes uh, the belly of the whale where it had tons of fishes floating around. And that's where we get to see Seth uh, appearing. So it looks like Seth isn't dead after all. <laughs> he was just woken up. You know, he found out that everything's okay. And then that's when Rachel came and just found Seth and they fell in love. Well, <laughs> Harry just uh, is already stuck with the dog already on top of the rooftop of the apartment and yeah, this is where he tries to do the same like what Seth does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, this could have been an intriguing concept if the execution wasn't so adequate and shallow I mean granted imagine what it would have been like if God did do evil things then the devil and why does this have to happen to good people well that's exactly what we're going for but executive producer Ivan Reitman brought this feat to the table as it tries to blend a mixture of dark humor with sweet and tender moments of romance in there that's drenched into the mass hysteria of biblical proportions here and there <laughs> yeah, I'm just going for a reference to Ghostbusters um, a writer and director Daniel Tablitz suddenly took the approach and just washed it away with strong seawater and that's exactly what happened and now granted Quinn Cox and LaPelia are good but the characters are now fully developed I mean, at this point, Seth is a charming underdog with all the rotten luck he has, but he's trying to fix that problem. Rachel is pleasant, but very distressed, and Harry is just a total righteous jerk. And this is exactly what, what was going on. But the other characters are just basically cookie cutters, although some of them are not so bad, like Alex Drummond, Tom Ulrich, and and even Joanna Going, who's very beautiful in this film, even though it's a small role. However, it did have wonderful cinematography, you know, such as the, all these rich blue uh, gel lighting that's coming from the sky, and yeah, because there was a huge storm coming up. There was actually some visual CGI effects on the hurricane, even the all the way straight into it. You know, just when Seth was actually watching a red report on the Weather Channel, he begins to see something in the middle of it, 
and this is where he imagines and you see like a huge ball of what's supposed to be the hurricane great effects that they use and there are some funny moments here and there just to add it up for it but I just think the film could have been a whole lot better and, I, and maybe that was the problem but it is fast paced it's only you know, 88 minutes which is an hour and 28 minutes so that's how long it is it's very short but I guess perhaps the moral of the story of this movie is that breaking your commandments can change your life for the better literally but that doesn't mean that it's right and more so or less but all, all the wise um, well <laughs> what can you do I mean it won't bring back his wife Karen but He'll definitely have a good life. He'll definitely um, find a beautiful home somewhere. Well, at least he got the girl now, so that's so all matters. I did actually put this on my worst list on, on my uh, letterbox account. Yeah, the worst films of 1997. But you know what? It's better than most bad films I've seen. I mean, quite honestly, I'd rather watch Commandments over Fifty Shades of Shit, you know, Babin and Robin, Steel, uh, all the Twilight movies, and all this other crap. So it's better than most bad movies out there, but that's all I can say. Um, I guess, in, in a way, it, it can be a time waster, so I can watch it anytime, whenever I feel like it. Mostly for the cast and the visual effects and all that. And the intriguing concept, even though it had to be that way. Well, anyway. <laughs> so that's Commandments, and I give the movie two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.